Welcome back to my studio. It's Belinda with Blue Ribbon Designs. Today I am here with floss tube number eight. Yes, number eight. I never thought I'd get past number one, but here we are. We're on number eight. I, I'm kind of excited that we're still going along on these. Thank you for the feedback and uh, I've gotten some good just some constructive criticism and things to work on. And everybody's just been really inviting in this community. And I thank you for that. I'm gonna talk about my new Halloween cross stitch design releases today. Behind me, you'll see some of my older releases sitting up on the shelf um, with my trims and fabrics and things. I like to design for Halloween. I have a wide range of Halloween patterns. Uh, they're more for the the lighter side of Halloween. I don't get too much into the scary Halloween. These are all pretty merry, but we'll just kind of go through each one, talk about the fabric, the threads, the supplies, just everything used with them, um, some different design ideas for you, ways to finish, and I hope that you'll see something in here that really interests you. These are all special to me. Each one of these was designed um, just to bring me joy. They just, um, working on new releases has actually been making me happy. And it's taking away from some of the negativity that had come in by doing a lot of client orders and a lot of finishing kind of stole my joy for a while. And I'm just kind of hitting the reset button, putting out some new pieces. I would really like that to be my focus. I'd like to do a little bit more sewing and creating for my Etsy shop. And I have been working on two new little sewing patterns and testing them out. One is for a quilt retreat mat, a little quilted mat that comes in a couple sizes. And I've had a lot of requests for my pattern. It's pretty simplified for new quilters and beginners. So that will be fun to share in the future. And I also have a new little needle scissor case pocket. I'm not sure what I'm going to call it yet. It has wool in it for needles and pins and a pocket for your scissors. And it has a nice rounded flap and a elastic closure and it's made to go in your project bags to kind of hold um, all your little pieces and tools that you need for each project. So those will be coming in the future and I'm just kind of taking a, a reset. We've had a, a good summer. I might look a little red today. We had the boat out on Monday. My husband has a bass boat and on Labor Day we decided to just get out on the water. Really good for me because I don't take a break very often and I'm kind of forced out on the boat to not really do anything. So I laid back and we had music playing and we had our lunch and we had a couple cocktails and we just spent some time out on the water and that was great except I got sunburned and my face, I had stuff on, but my legs, which were pretty white, um, yeah, they're they're pretty red today. So you're you're missing out on that site, but I do have a good sunburn going on, which I also have a chill, which is why I have a sweatshirt on. But I do have I'm sporting the Michigan football today, so go blue. Uh, we've also been to an MLS soccer game. We got to go see Sporting KC. We're going again this weekend. We oh, got to go see my Yankees play baseball, finally. Uh, they were here to play the Royals for a few games, so we were at the ballpark during the week when they were here. That was wonderful. Day games, night The day game was 108 degrees, so it was warm, but it is a dream come true for me to see my Yankees playing in person. We had really fun seats, and that was wonderful. We went to the women's um, professional soccer team, the place here. We went to one of their games. We got to go see Garth Brooks at Arrowhead Stadium, which was amazing with a group of friends and tailgate. So summer's just kind of, I've just kind of gotten lost in these last few weeks of summer and focusing on the new pieces. I have a few finishing orders left to get out and then I'm going to take a break for a while from those. It's all just kind of positive things happening and I'm excited to start stitching up my Thanksgiving, fall, autumn, and Christmas releases. And I actually was working on a Christmas ornaments last night, getting the des some design work done. So those are things to look for in the future. Um, now that I kind of spoke out about Just Cross Stitch Magazine not paying their designers 
and for the Christmas ornament issue, which is their biggest selling issue. Um, I kind of pulled the plug on that and thank you all for your wonderful feedback that reached out to me um, that designers should be paid for their work, especially when it comes down to a company making money. And for 15 years, I did an ornament every year for the ornament issue. And this will be the first one I'm not involved in. But as I said in my statement, when I kind of brought all this up, and talked about how I wasn't going to be taken advantage of like that as a designer anymore. I told everyone that I would still have an ornament this year and I will. And I'm not sure how I'm gonna go about putting it out into the world. Um, I have some ideas for something fun, but there will be Christmas ornament, maybe more than one this year. And just some neat, neat little things in the works. There's definitely more Rick Rack rounds in the works. Uh, for the upcoming holidays. But today we're going to focus on Halloween. So we'll make this a little fun little merry Halloween segment. And I hope you like the new pieces I've come out with. It's kind of a assortment of different things going on and some stuff that I don't, it's just a little surprising. It's fun for me for cross stitch. So the first one we have, I hope there's not too much glare on this, but I'll put an inset in if there is. This is Ghostly Gatherings. This is BRD 124. Again, these are available in my Etsy shop and they are digital download format. I've printed them out so that I could share them with you here today and have all the information in front of me. If you are interested in any of these in printed format, shoot me an email. I will send you a PayPal invoice. I will print them out like this, bag them up and send them to you. I charge just a little bit more for the printing and then I will charge you exact postage to send them your way. But just keep that in mind. If you are a person that does not like the digital download format, I will do my very best to help you out. I understand that. So Ghostly Gatherings is stitched on 28 count summer khaki cashel. And it is stitched with Weeks Dye Works Cotton Floss and the DMCs are in there. Um, this is a very neutral colored fabric. You could use pretty much any neutral fabric you'd like to work on these. Um, just make it dark enough that you can see your little ghosts coming out of the haunted house. Other than that, you could stitch these on pretty much any color you would like. The Merry Boo Day, or yeah, Happy Boo Day, sorry, is the jack-o'-lanterns and owls and little blackbirds. We've got the Lady Dot Creates Black Pom, the, I think it's licorice pom-pom trim, and Lady Dot Creates hand-dyed velveteen on the back. And then for Merry Fright Night, same thing. A little haunted house with its ghosts. We've got the orange pom-pom trim from Lady Dot. And on the back, check out this velveteen. So I call these bowl fillers. You could use them as pin cushions. They're cute little pillows. You could stitch them on different counts and make them smaller or bigger. Um, this, the 28 count is really large for me, uh, but I worked on these um, as an idea for a magazine many years ago, and that was what the magazine had requested. And I decided to go ahead and stitch them up the way I had written them and then finish them in my own fun way. So this is a set, the pair of two small Halloween pillows bowl fillers, and it's called Ghostly Gatherings. Here are the lady dots. This is, I guess the purple is purple onion, and the orange backing is yams. And these are both hand dyed velveteen, and this stuff is so wonderful to work with. If you have not used it to back things, you need to try it. Um, just make sure that you press the soft fluffy side down. I always put it on a towel and, and press the back if you have to press it because you don't want to flatten out all that lovely velvet. I actually stuffed these with crushed walnut shells and fiber fill. I kind of mix it together. I have a huge bucket of, well, it's like a big container with a lid on it that's filled with sawdust. Did I tell you I filled these with crushed walnut shells? What am I talking about? I filled this with sawdust and fiber fill. 
So it's just a mixture. I kind of put the fiber fill, I break it up, I fluff it all out and just put it in with the sawdust and I kind of mix it together and then I stuff them. Both of these are stuffed that way. The trims are, the black pom-poms are licorice and the orange pom-poms are Jack. I will put links to all these items and things I talk about below. Okay, so the next one, this was so much fun to do. I had so much fun with this, you have no idea. Um, this is called Holding the Bag. It is two different, it's a pair of Halloween bags, one for tricks and one for treats. The tricks bag, I have filled with little slips of paper with little jokes on them, which are included in the pattern. And of course the treats bag, you're gonna put your treats in there. These are stitched on 28 count Cachelle Platinum. Again, as long as your ghosts show up, you can use almost any color of neutral fabric. Pretty, you can make these smaller, you can make them bigger. The finishing instructions are, they're included for the ghostly gatherings I showed you for the bowl fillers. Finishing instructions are included for these bags as well. All of my patterns, I try to include finishing instructions. These are stitched with Gentle Art sampler threads, but of course I list the DMCs as I always do. So you can kind of choose your own favorite colors. You can use the conversion to pick other hand dyed threads. I really want my patterns just so you can use them with your favorite materials. So I hope you're able to do that. These use some cotton fabric for the bags, some wool, a little bit of rickrack and some ribbon to tie them closed. The pattern, when you print it out, will have four pages. Let's put this back against this. Maybe you'll be able to see it better. Four pages that you can print out that are all Halloween jokes. And then I just used a paper trimmer. You could use scissors to cut them apart. There are 10 jokes on a page four pages. So you have 40 different jokes to put in your bag of tricks. Jokes as good as what do demons eat for breakfast? Deviled eggs. Or what do you call a witch at the beach? A sandwich. So they're all, they're all like dad Halloween jokes. Which of the witch's friends was good at baseball? the bat. It's just fun stuff like that. What do witches put in their hair? Scare spray. So it was a, I cannot tell you how much fun I had putting together all the jokes for these. There are 40 different jokes and you can cut them all apart, print them on, you can print them on colored paper. You can print them on white paper as I've done here and then just trim them apart. So for the bag of tricks, it will look like this. It says bag of tricks on it. You have two ghosts coming out of the tree with a large jack-o'-lantern and then they're, it's attached as a pocket. Finishing instructions will tell you how to do that. It's mounted on a piece of wool and the wool is blanket stitched onto the fabric. We've got rickrack and matching ribbon, both from Lady Dot. And here are the slips of paper. I have some in the top and then you can fold them or place them however you want inside the bag. Right now I just have some paper in the bag to keep it kind of fluffed up so you guys can see how it should look. But you can stick all the jokes in the little pocket in the front. And these little slips of paper are great to put in a child's lunchbox, their backpack. If you're sending a friend a card or a note, you can slip one of these little cute little jokes inside. You can hand them out to your trick-or-treaters with their candy. So just some fun ideas to use the tricks. Lots of fun with that. And then for the bag of treats, same thing. We have two ghosts, only this time they have little trick-or-treat pails. You put treat, all the treats inside of this little pocket and sidebar. How cute are these little Kit Kats? They're called Witch's Brew. I found them by accident at the grocery store and I was like, these are so cute. I need to have these for my photo. So treats inside the pocket. You can put treats inside the bag. Um, you could, you know, have children pick whether they want a trick or a treat or one of both. Just a, just something fun, new, creative finishing idea. 
again, um, Rick Rack and Licorice and Ribbon, I believe in Licorice as well, and Jack, the color Jack on the Trix bag. So that was fun to work on. Next up, my new Rick Rack rounds. This is a series I'm doing. If you saw my 4th of July Independence Day kind of Americana summery ones uh, with the bird on the watermelon and the little cottage. This is my second set. This is called Hitching a Ride. And Hitching a Ride is because there is a witch with a cat on its cloak. Very fun to stitch these up. You can find my finishing tutorial on these on this same YouTube channel. It is Floss Tube episode seven for me, and it gives you step-by-step, -step, really comprehensive directions for anyone to be able to finish these rig rack rounds. These are stitched on 32 count navy bean by Lakeside Linens. It will make them, the finishing circles I cut are three and a quarter inches. So when you add the rig rack onto that, these are maybe three and a half inches round total when they are finished, but they are stitched on 32 count navy bean. You could stitch them on any count you want. You'll just have to adjust the finishing instructions to match the size. These are stitched again with the silky 12 weight cotton petites. All of the Rick Rack rounds I have planned are stitched with the silky 12 weight cotton petites and the DMC threads are listed. I had a comment on this on my Etsy shop and it's the same with any, there have been, this is the third pattern that I use silky 12 weight petites on. They, none of them are variegated and I pick the DMCs that are as close as absolutely possible because I'm a stitcher and I know sometimes you don't want to go get supplies or you can't afford supplies and you want to use what you have on hand. So the DMCs are as close to the silkies as I could get. So if you don't want to stitch with the silky 12 weight, pull the DMCs. They're going to be pretty close to identical because it isn't, they are not a variegated, they are not variegated colors. They are not the the blendables. I like the Sulky 12 weight because it uses one strand on 32 count. It's convenient. They are on little spools and the spools actually have a place to put your thread ends. So there's a little slat here and you probably won't be able to see it, but your thread can go in there and park it. So you don't have thread, loose threads all over. I don't have to have bags. A lot of times I'm stitching with a little basket and I just have all of the thread colors in the basket. But these are all solid colors. So don't be discouraged. If you do not have the Sulkies, try the DMCs. You're gonna get the same look that I have for the models. I just wanted to share that because there was kind of a, a negative comment well, not really a negative comment, but not the best review for the pattern because it used Sulky. And I had to send this person a message and say, hey, it's exactly the same as the DMC. It's just, you only need one strand. I really like the Sulky threads. I'm not gonna lie. And all of the Rick Rack rounds I have planned will be done with the Sulky threads, but they will all have DMC conversions for you. For these, again, um, I use Lady Dot Creates hand dyed Rick Rack. I had a question about which size, and she has two sizes. One is a mini Rick Rack, but I use the half inch Rick Rack. I don't use the little mini Rick Rack. So half inch Rick Rack in three colors. I used uh, green, which is called algae, bird's nest, which is a brown, and jack, of course, which is orange. I use comic book board. Um, the pins, I, I got some questions about the pins and where do I get them in the different colors. And you can get them at any craft or sewing store, but I order them on Amazon. And I'll put a link down below to my Amazon shop. If you go there and you click on Sewing Room Essentials, those are all the things that I order from Amazon that I use in my designs or in my studio. And there'll be a link there for the supplies you need for this as far as the pens and the comic book board, the double-sided tape, things like that. They are all listed there. Uh, the pens, there's a couple different ones, but they can come in big packs with like 12 little boxes of all different colors. So for these, I have used 
for the little witch with the cat on its back, I have used the algae colored rickrack, which is a green, and I have used light orange pins. And then for the little haunted house with the little tiny ghost in the window, which someone noticed that on Instagram and that made me really happy. I think it was Garrett Coffee Stitcher um, put a little comment of how cute is the little ghost in the window? And that made me so happy. He is stitched over one. You can omit him um, if you don't want to do the over one, but it's very, very minimal. It's like 16 stitches. It's very small. I use the bird's nest rickrack. I use black pins. And then for my raven on the pumpkin, I used Jack orange rickrack and I used a silver pin. So these are just regular sewing pins. These are probably an inch and a quarter, inch and a half. I put the pins in between the waves of the rickrack. You can put them in front of the waves. You can omit the pins completely. You could stitch these and make ornaments, just round ornaments. So there's a lot of fun things you can do with these if you don't want to do the rickrack rounds. These work great in a display bowl or a three-tiered tray. I've just, I found lots of fun little uses for these and they're quick and easy to put together. Check out my floss tube tutorial and you'll be like, wow, these are so much easier than I thought. The backs of these are always cotton fabric. For this one, all three of them are the same. I just used what I had in my stash, which is a Halloween polka dot. I don't have any information on this fabric, but if you go on Etsy or eBay or, you know, to a quilt shop and say, I want polka dot Halloween fabric, you're going to find some. It might not be identical to this, but it's going to be really close. There's multiple ones available. I just thought it matched nice with the colors and the different motifs. Again, here are some of the colors of Rick Rack that I used. And for the pins, this is the silver, the orange, and a black. And if you want to know more about these, uh, there's a couple different sets in my Amazon shop. Um, I have no plans to monetize this channel or put ads on it. I don't put ads on my blog. Everything that I share with you guys, I pretty much do because I want to, because I'm excited to share it with you, because I hope you like my patterns. Uh, but if you do um, go to my Amazon shop and you purchase anything by clicking on the links there, I do get a few pennies for that. So I appreciate that. I thank you for those of you who have done a little shopping through Amazon that have used my store to get started. I think that's all I have on the Rick Rack rounds. Um, the autumn ones are exciting and I have some really fun ideas for the Christmas ones. I started working on Christmas ornaments last night and getting all my charting done and I was like, oh, I got to do Christmas rounds. I just love working on these. It's just the size is really good. They're great for gift gifting. They stitch up quickly and if you watch the tutorial, you see they are put together pretty quickly. They use basic supplies. If you don't have the hand-dyed rickrack, rickrack of any type, you can use the rights. Um, I know, um, who else? Like Hobby Lobby and Joann's and places like that all sell rickrack in a package. And you can get the half inch or the medium rickrack and... Um, you know, take your stitching along with you or your colors so you can pick good matches. Uh, but you can use pretty much any rickrack you want. It doesn't necessarily have to be a hand-dyed rickrack. It's just that's my personal preference. So those are Hitchin' a Ride, and that is BRD 126. There is... The first couple designs I showed you are just cross-stitch and back-stitch. Um, this one, like I said, has a minimal, a little tiny bit of stitching over one. And I should tell you about this on the witches one, the broom. I used just long straight stitches off of the base of the broom. And then I just used two little black tacking stitches to pull them together to kind of make it look like a broom. So these are really long. I do have them drawn on the pattern, but you don't have to follow that. Like just do a bunch of like, 
you know, long straight stitches that would look like broom bristles to you. And then I just tied them with two, I used two stitches of black to kind of pull it together around the broom handle. And the cat's whiskers, same thing. I used just long straight stitches to give the cat some little white whiskers. So there's pretty much, there's cross stitch over one, back stitch, long straight stitch, and then you have just the little bit of over one stitching, which is the witch's eye. There's four stitches um, to do three little green and one black for the eye. And then the little tiny ghost in the window is also stitched over one. I did use the same one strand of Sulky, a 12 weight to do those. If you're stitching with DMC, you can switch to one strand and do cross stitch over two with two strands, cross stitch over one with one strand. And finally today, this is Halloween haul. This is BRD 127. It is a couple of blackbirds celebrating their Halloween candy haul. They're celebrating Halloween by maybe stealing some kids candy and then celebrating with it later. Maybe they found some candy on doorsteps. So it's just a couple blackbirds. They're celebrating Halloween. We got the bats. We've got the pumpkins, bright colors. It is stitched on 32 count tarnished silver by Lakeside Linens. And I used Weeks Dye Works Cotton Floss and the DMC conversion of course is there for you. I finished mine as a quilted wall hanging like I've done some others recently that I've shown. You could easily frame this. It will fit if you're stitching it on the 32 count called for fabric. It will fit in an eight by 10 standard frame. So you could go to your Hobby Lobby, Joe Ann's Tuesday morning, wherever you're finding some frames and you could find an eight by 10 frame that would be really cute for this. Um, I decided to frame it in fabric and then just use a little wooden hanger on the back. And I've talked about my little wooden hangers in a previous floss tube video, um, but I make them myself and I just get quarter inch pieces of lumber and um, just cut them down. And I use a tap in little sawtooth hanger. I put little pockets on the back little triangles in the corners, like uh, they're squares folded in half. So they're, there's no raw edges. And I sew them into the binding so I can put my little sawtooth. I don't have the hanger in this one. I'm sorry, or I'd show it to you. But in a previous video, it's one of my very first ones. I talk about exactly how to make my little hangers. So this could be done with pretty much any kind of, you know, fun Halloween fabric. I thought this little mechanical looking candy fabric was so adorable. I found it at my local quilt shop. It is the Quilted Sunflower. This fabric um, was out last year, so you might not be able to find it in your current quilt shop, but if you want to do an Etsy search or an eBay search to find this fabric, I did put the name of it in the pattern. Do I have it written in here where I can see it? I don't, let me pull it out. I wanted to list it just in case you wanted that exact same fabric. I will put my quilt shop, the Quilted Sunflower down below. You can always give them a call. Leslie will, if you just tell her it's my design and it's yellow with can Halloween candy, she'll know exactly what you're talking about. Um, and I have a little bit, I believe, in my stash as well. Um, it is Cheekyville Collection by DTK Signature for Studio E Fabrics. And I'll insert that below um, so you can see it, not hear it. I'm guessing if you did an Etsy search or an eBay search, you would be able to pull up the Cheekyville Collection by Studio E Fabrics and you would be able to find some, you know, probably some smaller cuts of this out there. If there's some interest in some of this, I'll measure it out and I can cut what you need and we'll put some in my Etsy shop. Um, I, I maybe have two yards on hand. I don't have a whole bunch. 
Um, I just think this would look cute with almost any color of fabric. I don't, I think most Halloween prints would go along really well with this. I just used a mottled black for the inner border and the binding. And then I just thought the candy was fun because of the candy here. But pumpkins would be fun. Blackbirds would be fun. Little bats would be fun. You could do spider. There's so many good Halloween fabrics out there. Stitch your piece up on the fabric that you like. Um, this one only has a little bit of white and it's all backstitched. So you could do this on a completely different color of fabric. It would be really cute on a neutral or maybe like a, a, a darker brown. You could do it on a fun, lighter colors of fabric as well. You can, like I said, put it in an eight by 10 frame. You can frame it with fabric. Just a fun little addition to your holiday decor. This piece just makes me happy and I'm not sure why I think it's the hat on the one blackbird and that they're holding the candy in their mouths. First, I just had a lot of fun designing this and putting it together. The finishing instructions are included so you can sew it up just like mine. And that's it. That's all four Halloween pieces. Those are the new designs. They are all available currently in my Etsy shop. And like I said, they're digital download. And all of these, you could have stitched any one of these in time for Halloween. They are out early enough. I got the Rick Rack rounds done early enough that they could all be, any of these that you like could be stitched up. None of them are, you know, some of my really larger pieces that take more time to stitch. Like my Halloween advent calendar or things like that that take quite a while. Um, I will put up some pictures now <laughs> of the few designs behind me. Um, Creepy Crawly is always one that people ask about. This is a hand-stitched needlework casket. Um, it says, the stitching tools from my basket are laid to rest in this tiny casket. It's all stitched. This is stitched over one, the wording, everything else is over two. Inside, when you open it up, there is a skeleton inside the casket. There are thread rings um, and Rick Rack is holding the threads in place. The walls are all put together. Um, it's tied together with some small pieces of ribbon and it's closed with a small piece of cord and a black button. The smalls that go inside a little needle book here lies Maya Needles, sharp, fine, a dear friend of mine. It is a tombstone and the back has the daisies being pushed up. And the inside of it, inside the little tombstone needle book just has a page of felt for your needles and your initials and the year. There is a scissor fob with a bat on one side and happy Halloween on the other side. And a uh, little kitty cat pin keep and it says my pins will sleep in this tiny keep. So just a fun Halloween set I designed years ago but I always like to get it out for this time of year. The casket is put together. Um, it is linen on the inside, linen on the outside and in between are pieces of skirtex or I like to use easy felt and they are cut to fit in between. The pieces are laced together and then laced together with a uh, transparent thread. And there are full instructions in the pattern on how to put it together. So it's a kind of fun, unique thing. I do not have Mischief at Midnight pulled out yet, but it is a Halloween tray with a needle. It is looks like a fenced little area for the tray on the outside and there is a gate that is a needle book and it has some other smalls as well. And for that, I do have some finishing kits left. If you are someone who has that pattern and wants to put it together, I have pre-cut all of the easy felt Skirtex pieces for you and it has everything else you need. If you go to my Etsy shop um, and you look under finishing kits, you will see there is a finishing kit for Mischief at Midnight. I maybe have 10 or 12 left on hand. I don't have a ton of them. So if you're interested in that, it has the fabric for the bottom of the tray. 
I will put some pictures up here so you can see what I'm talking about. We also have Halloween with a Y back here, which gives you directions for another type of little treat bag and a larger ornament. There um, is Halloween Wishes, which is a set of Halloween ornaments back here. I have quite a few Halloween designs. Um, some of them, all of the ones behind me are print patterns. I'm looking to maybe put some more of these into PDF format and add them to my site. But right now, all of the ones behind me are regular paper patterns that you can put in your cart, check out, and then I will ship them to you. I might in the next week or so might have some more of them put into PDF format. I'm slowly trying to get them available both ways. Um, other than that, there, yeah, there's probably 20 Halloween designs. I have a lot, a lot of Halloween designs and I have actually even have one stitched and will, that will come out next year. I'm already looked ahead to that has smalls with it. That's really fun. So those are my Halloween new releases. I hope I have something there that you get excited about if you're a Halloween stitcher. If you're not a Halloween stitcher, you can look forward to my next design releases. I'm trying to have some things ready for autumn and like I said, some Christmas ornaments, some rickrack rounds, some seasonal pieces will be coming out later this year. And then of course I will have two sewing patterns for those of you who follow my sewing quilting journey there will be those two pieces coming out as well. So I thank you for visiting with me today, for letting me pursue my passion, for just kind of sharing my enthusiasm for cross stitch, for visiting with me in my studio today. And I hope I'll be back sooner um, than this last time. I have filmed a couple other videos that I have not edited yet. One is, uh, most asked questions about Blue Ribbon Designs and design work in general. Um, it's a little bit longer video, but it covers um, kind of how I got my start, what my background is, how I kind of got interested in design. It shows um, some of my first stitching pieces, my first Blue Ribbon winner, my... Um, it shows a sketchbook that I draw in. Just a lot of um, little, just fun little historical things on blue ribbon designs and questions I get asked a lot. Answers on pe when people ask me about becoming a cross stitch designer and what I would tell them. Um, things like that. So that video will be coming in the near future. It's already filmed, it just needs edited, which means I have to put in the closed captions. And that's really important to me. I have some hearing impaired friends and viewers, and I know when YouTube shows you a translation on your screen, it is not always accurate, and you have weird words and things that don't make sense. And I really want my hearing impaired friends to have the same experience watching my videos. So it usually takes me a couple days to go in and the talk to text that's not right and correct it all and read through frame by frame all, you know, all of the closed captions. So I have that video that will be coming out that's all question and answers. And then I filmed a video that is all about storage in my studio, how I store my threads, how I store cross stitch fabric, how I store wools and fabrics and trims and my favorite kind of storage solutions. And I haven't done it yet, but I'd like to film just kind of around my studio and in my walk-in closet and things that show you a little bit more there. Kind of how I sh store my zippers and my stabilizers and things like that. So at some point, I will get all that edited. I'll get the studio filmed and added to that and um, I'll be back with those. So you'll see me again when there's new releases, um, the questions and answers, the studio storage, stuff like that. If you have something you really wanna see or you want a tutorial on, or you'd like to hear me talk about a little bit more, please drop me a comment, send me an email. I love hearing from all of you. Uh, stitchers are 
truly some of the nicest, most giving people in the world. And shout out to Mary W. If you are watching this, who sent me the nicest, most encouraging card at the exact perfect moment. Sent, sent me a handwritten, which is not seen very often these days, card in the mail with words that just kind of gave me a, a boost um, when I was kind of feeling pretty low about things. So Mary, if you are watching this, thank you so much for your handwritten note. I appreciate you. And I will be back to visit with all of you again real soon. Thank you so much for your support of Blue Ribbon Designs and for making it to the end of this video. Bye.